Thank God June is fucking done. June was a wild ride, man. June, so many albums happened this fucking month. It was overwhelming. Every fucking week, there was like 27 albums. It was kind of ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy it's over. We're into July now, which is great. And yeah, I have a pretty cool playlist of songs that I've been enjoying throughout June and all that because, you know, many songs did release in June, but I've also got some other stuff that wasn't released in fucking June. Whatever, welcome back. You know the drill. This is the fucking B Tech playlist. Baby, let's fucking go. Track one on the playlist is Hubble by Actress. Uh, as in the one from Splash. I think he has another, he has another, he has like two songs named Hubble. One being the final track on his new project, but this is the one I've chosen as the opening track to Splash. Um, Actress just has this really brilliant knack of making these incredibly enveloping techno songs that just totally make you forget that life is real. I just get so deeply immersed in Actress's music quite frequently. It's really quite impressive how he pulls it off. And uh, yeah, this track is like eight minutes long. It, it, honestly, it feels like four minutes long. You just get lost in the trance. And when it's done, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, back to real life. Track two, fuck you, Fungalius, you piece of shit. I hope you fucking did. Okay, Fungalius, I love you, but yeah, fuck you, bitch. You're a piece of shit. No, we're not doing this. Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? What are you stupid? You said Big Fish Theory is a 3 out of 10. Are you like... You said the only good beats are the ones produced by Sophie. Are you deaf? How the fuck are you gonna slander one of the most forward-thinking rap albums of the decade? Unquestionably. Unquestionably one of the most cutting-edge and exciting rap albums of the decade, in my opinion, Big Fish Theory. The track I've chosen is Party People, uh, because it has a fantastic chorus, a uh, really solid laser-focused type flow from uh, bits on both verses, a wild instrumental that just blows my fucking mind. Love the percussion on this beat, dude. And yeah, man, what the fuck are you saying, bro? I don't- I'm saying the verses are dry or something. Like, bro, if you listen to the songs, you listen to the beats, you listen to the way Vince is rapping on the beat, he is clearly very aware of the best, most efficient way to tackle each instrumental. Like, he is rapping with so much fucking confidence, fluency, charisma. Like, it, it, his flow, it caters so fucking ideally to the bounce and group of the beat. Samo, a fucking, fucking Samo, definitely homage as well. And when you have songs like fucking Homage, which are just total roller coasters with really insane, with the fucking Rick Ross interpolation of the chorus and the really wild performance from Vince, and this beat that's just constantly just going and going, just accelerating and shit, it's just so fucking exciting. Like, this shit, it, every track on this thing just fucking blows my mind. Every time I hear it, I'm just like, this shit is so creative and wild and Vince is performing really in a really entertaining way a lot of the time he's never he's never trying too hard his lyrics often deal with the subtext of how fame can affect you badly the illicit include I think is a really great moment on the album that exemplifies that quite nicely yeah I just think I just don't really have many issues at all with this album bro and uh, you're over here slandering it and disregarding all of its brilliant qualities that set it apart from every fucking album that comes out in, in the rap genre like this thing is such is such a unique identity it man just to do so much with its 36 minute long runtime. The track lengths are often very just condensed and just brief and they just fucking hit you. Yeah, Fungolius, you stupid, stupid. Fuck, it's fucking stupid, Fungolius. Just stupid. Next up we have, I totally forgot. Oh yeah, it's uh, Jaden Smith with George Jeff. Uh, yeah, man, look, Saya is bad, but I love the instrumentals on it. I really think they are fantastic. And Jaden has just such a confident, charismatic flow. I mean, he sounds kind of tired and kind of lazy, like he's effortlessly just trying to sound like super cool and shit. But I think he totally pulls it off. He has loads of confidence. And yeah, the flow is just so laser focused and solid. Uh, yeah, great track. I really enjoy this song. I think it's a total bang. And next up after this one, I have No Name. Yeah, No Name with Forever. Fucking incredible chorus on this track. Love the instrumental. It's so just twinkly and summery and fun. I'm starting to think maybe Telephone is my favorite mixtape of all time. I love Joseph Chilean's verse on this track too. Such a heartwarming verse in my opinion. Next up, I can't fucking remember anything, I swear to God. Next up is Kimbra with Black Sky, man. Such a great chorus on this song. Love the very um, glistening outro thing at the end too. Just those really like kind of starry and twinkly synth arpeggios at the end sound really nice. Love the way the verses contrast with the hook too. It's just when the hook comes in, it's just such a satisfying explosion, but the verses have this really cool, slick, confident demeanor to them as well. Uh, yeah, great track. One of my favorites from Primal Heart. Next up, I have One of Tricks Point Never with Romance Apocalypse uh, from the Good Time soundtrack. Never actually really sat down 
uh, with the good time soundtrack, like, um, like well, until recently at least. And uh, yeah, it's it's legit on par with his other albums. Like, what the fuck? Daniel Lupatin? How? Yeah, literally, you could just treat the soundtrack as just another One of Tricks Point Never album, and it totally satisfies in that regard. And I thought this track might make for a nice little transitional interlude type song in the middle of the playlist or something. So yeah, Romance Apocalypse is the song I've chosen. Next up, I have Reggie Snow with Pink. Beetle, the best thing in Reggie Snow's entire catalog, dude. The hook on this track is golden. I don't know who sings the hook. He's not credited, but holy fucking shit, the chorus on the song is so catchy. The swing, the hula, the way he just fucking pulls it off is so great. Such a well-executed song. Love the piano too. And Reggie actually has a good sense of hunger on this song too, which is quite rare. Normally he's quite laid back and chill, but here he sounds legitimately really aggressive. Next up, I have Feel the Love by uh, Kanye West and Kid Cudi, aka Kid Sea Ghost. I was originally gonna have this be the first track on the playlist because it is an opening track and all uh but dude legit the way reggie snow's pink beetle flows into this song is too flawless for it to not be here and yeah this song is excellent man it's honestly probably my favorite or maybe my second favorite from kids see ghost fourth dimension being the only one that might itch it out a little bit the ominous start from pusha t is so perfect with those just very kind of skeletal chords and the way kid cuddy just comes in with that fear the love refrain it's just so like powerful i fucking love it it's such such dominance to his voice on the song and, and of course the best part the best part is kanye west's phenomenal big shack impression the first time kanye goes yeah, like when he just fucking bursts in it's such a fucking satisfying moment and when the drum is just pummeling it's this is such a brilliant intro track this honestly is such a good start to an album like this is how you fucking start an album. It sets such a strong tone. It's in, it's amazing, honestly. Uh, after this song, though, I believe we have DJ Shadow with Midnight in a Perfect World. This song is gorgeous, but it has this really beautiful underlying tone of just sorrow that I really appreciate, especially with that piano that comes in around a minute and a half or two minutes into the song. It adds a whole new layer and dynamic and, and feel to the track that I think just gives it so much nuance. But next up after that, we have a total change of pace. I discovered something quite awesome recently. Uh, grime music. Okay, grime. You know, UK hip hop, grime. Well, no, you, that's a different thing. Grime is its own subgenre. UK hip hop is like a whole different thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also drill. It's, it's like a whole thing. It's like a whole fucking. Yeah, grime is what I'm focusing on here. Basically, grime has been a thing like my whole life. Like here in Maidenhead, where I live, here in, in, the, in the county of Berkshire, I think grime has just always kind of flourished and thrived quite a lot. And growing up, I always had like a weird stigma against grime because I just knew so many fucking dickheads. Like, I've just known a lot of shitty people that really like listen, to, all they listen to is grime, so I just affiliate it with them. And like, I just try to like, I would always try to just ignore grime. But now that I've like gotten into music, I can totally just put that behind me and just enjoy it for, for what it is. And yeah, I've just come to the realization that legit, like seriously, legit, like honestly, I go on a lot of nighttime walks. It's just something I, I find myself doing quite a lot. Going on a nighttime walk, around Maidenhead whilst listening to Grime it's the fucking good, bro. It's such a perfect combo because, like, a lot of grime music, like, it just, it, it's just the genre as a whole is a really good sonic representation of just the essence of Maiden. <laughs> like, it's really accurate. And the song I am highlighting right here is 96 Fuckeries by JME. This track is so cutthroat. It is brilliant. The beat is fucking mental and it's just constant bars, no chorus, just constant fucking bars. That being said, there are a few terrible lines. The one about like talk shit poo poo chewer or something that was terrible. But dude, I just love the way it starts, man. The way it comes in, he's like, oh please, can get it teams and teams. I'm J to the M to the E, G R I to the M to the E. Like, it's so fucking sick. Like, I, I love the confidence from Jamie on this song. It's just, it's just cut fucking throwing. I like how at the very end, you hear him say one take, like he did the whole thing in like one take, which if that is the case, A, props man that was that's a pretty impressive performance and this track yeah it's just so fucking it's just constant energy and i love it and speaking of grime you know what i got another grime song in the playlist as well uh skepta with man i fucking love the bit where he says like it's boy better know till i die trying to run up in the bank like body and clyde like then the, the, the beat just comes in it's so fucking good the way it flows it is perfect such a great chorus and i love that line where he says like uh he's schooling these rappers no one leaves till half past three <laughs> That is fucking hilarious. And I love the bit, and the, the entire second verse is just gold. But I particularly also love the ending of the second verse where he says, like, who is he? Why is he walking around with security? He wrote, but no, that's speed that fluently. And then the hook comes in. So fucking hard, man. And this beat is brilliant, too. It's probably my favorite track uh, from Kanichiwa. Such a fucking good song. After that, I have Up with the song Zebra. Just an, electro an electronic album I just kind of stumbled across recently. I thought was quite lovely. Uh, the track that really stood out to me is the song Fluorescences, uh, or track three on the album. I thought it was really, really stuck. 
stunning. Uh, some gorgeous, just lovely, beautiful reverby synth work on this on this song. I think it's really quite textured and lovely. Really entrancing song. Five minutes, it just breezes by. You just, you just get totally lost in it. It's a lovely track. After that, I have Gold Panda with the song Chiba Days. Now, Gold Panda is a producer. I fucking love this dude. I think he's such a good producer. He's really overlooked in my opinion. I highly recommend checking out his album, Good Luck and Do Your Best. It is such a good summer album. It's really, really relaxing. And uh, yeah, legit. If, if it's sunny outside, if you're going on a walk or something, if you're at the beach, if you're at the beach, this album would be flawless. Uh, amazing sampling on this thing. So many great grooves. Uh, but yeah, the song I've chosen is actually not from that album. It's, it's called Chiba Days, which is a reworked version of the song Chiba Nights. That is from that album. It's track three. And the original version is very dancey and groovy. But this Chiba Days version is a lot more just reflective and gorgeous and euphoric and smooth. Great fucking track. Really love that one. Next up, I have Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, okay. So Freddie Gibbs dropped like a mixtape recently or something. It's called Freddie. And it's just a whole bunch of trap bangers, right? But the one I have to fucking highlight has got to be... Track two, Automatic. The beat on this track, that weird, like, in the background of the beat, you can hear, like, some fucking vocal thing, and it just sounds so sick. It adds so much to the track, and Freddie Gibbs sounds so cold-blooded on this fucking song. Such a banger. Love this track. One of the hardest tracks of the year, in my opinion. After that one, I have Death Heaven with the song Come Back. Um, to be fair, this song, it does kind of follow a pretty traditional structure. I, I, I do see Death Heaven used quite often where, like, the first leg of the song is really aggressive and, and fucking wild with screaming vocals, and then it kind of just transitions into a much more melodic and gorgeous passage at the end. Uh, I think the way they pull it off on this particular song from their album, New Bermuda, is really quite beguiling and alluring. Uh, the, the ending sequence, the last handful of minutes, is just so fucking mesmeric and, and, and gorgeous. It just puts me in a total trance. Sounds fucking lovely really really uh, wonderful stuff next up i have boards of canada with the song music is math really love the squelchy drums on this song i think they give it just a really potent atmosphere that i i, I fucking love and the way it's paired up too with these really kind of harrowing vocal samples is lovely and the synths in the beginning of the song are just gorgeous too i've been playing their album geo daddy quite a lot lately it's very long uh, but it's got some stunning moments if you're an electronic fan it's a total essential in my opinion after that it is video age with the song scenic highway the synths on this song are oh, so smile inducing bro if you like that 80s tinge kind of synth wavy sound and you want it to be put in a more kind of funky groovy context uh this song is gonna do it for you man it's really really lovely right after that i have a song which honestly this track might have one of my favorite beats of the year dude this beat is so fantastic uh kyle with the song games that like weird 8-bit sample flip or whatever the fuck that is on the instrumental dude it sounds so brilliant and i think uh kyle uh, his performance on the song is as as playful, vibrant, and as energetic as, as it ever will be with Kyle. He sounds just like he's having the most fun ever on this song. He just sounds like he's having a great time, meshes perfectly with the very cheerful beat as well. Yeah, total banger, really catchy. Again, love the instrumental to death. Uh, yeah, it's a nice short track too, like two minutes, ten seconds. Just, yeah, just gets in, gets out, and it's a good time. Right after that one, though, it is Monte Booker with the song Flight. Uh, I would like to assume that he made this song whilst he was on a flight because there are samples of, like, uh, like the voice, like, uh, collect your luggage and shit like that, like, at an airport, like, shit that you would hear on airport that's just, like, being played in the background. Uh, but I love the, the fucking electric piano on this song. The way the beat comes in makes me, oh, my God. Every time I hear the beat drop on this track, it's just so fucking brilliant it's such a satisfying moment and yeah and yeah the electric piano on this song is gorgeous a uh, really sick track right after that i have death grips with the fear um yeah dude i have to include something from year of the snitch year of the snitch in my opinion probably one of death grips best albums yet it is such a fucking roller coaster jesus it is fucking crazy uh, and the song that i think just hits me the hardest every time i hear it has got to be the fear uh, whether it be lyrically or instrumentally it's just such a daring and exciting song it's it's just insane from the eerie piano to the explosive chorus uh and, and the brilliant outro too a really great ending to the song great climax uh, generally this track is one of the best i think probably in death grips catalog I, I really fucking love this track and the next up i have james blake with the wilhelm scream arguably his best song i think it's either this or i never learned to share just james blake's voice for how the fuck if you if, if legit if, if literally okay literally i don't really i normally don't really get like mad uh, opinions like that you know everyone has their own taste and all that good shit subjectivity and all that shit but legit if you if you say anything negative about james blake's voice you're getting blocked, you're getting reported, I am emailing your cousin, you're getting fucking destroyed. 
<laughs> I am se- I am sending a pigeon to your great aunt. Okay, if you fucking disrespect. <laughs> I'm faxing your uncle. You're getting doxxed. <laughs> uh, yeah, but for real. Okay, James Blake's voice though. It's the best shit. Ever. And that brings us to the last track on the playlist, which yeah, okay, it's Sophie uh, with Whole New World, Pretend World. I think of all of the new songs that came out in June from all the albums, I think the one that left the biggest impression on me upon first listen was definitely this one. It kind of gave me like an igloo ghost white gum moment when I first heard that song and I was just so overwhelmed and fucking blown away by what I was hearing. Like that's the experience I had with that final track on the Sophie album. I was just completely dumbfounded by it. Every second it was just expanding into something even more insane. I just could not comprehend it. It was just so fucking crazy. It's just nine minutes of fucking insanity. And I really love it. Pretty my favorite Sophie song to date. It, it is truly something crazy. So yeah, that's the playlist. That's the play, that's the June playlist, bitch. I hope you liked it. I hope you thought this was a good video. I uh, hope you enjoy some of the songs. I hope I put you onto some songs or anything like that. If you want, please leave the songs that you've been enjoying uh, recently in the comments. I would love to see what you guys have been playing. And that is everything I have to say. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you. Shout out to Tamsin and Jordan. If you are watching this, shout out to you guys. I had a fucking awesome day today and you played a huge role in that. So yeah, awesome. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.